New adventure today on Cash Canada. But we're not with Lyric Glass. We're with our muggle son, Paul. Hi. We just had to portage around this falls, right at the beginning uh, from the lake to the river. And hopefully from here on in, it's smooth sailing. We made it to the uh, 529 bridge and a lot better going than I thought it was going to be. I thought for sure way back there, and you can see from the satellite images it wasn't really clear. And I thought we were going to have a lot more marsh, but the river was wide and clear and flat. And uh, we have just about seven kilometers more to go from here and it's a lot better and easy going. the rainbow. Ooh, ouch, we're on solid land, kind of. Leg stretch. Terra Ooh. firma. <laughs> <laughs> Terra firma. <laughs> oh, so 15 kilometer paddle ish. Wow. And we think we found a, a cool spot to camp just uh, coming here. Really nice, um, beautiful view with a fire pit right on that the edge. Way. Yep. And this is the first cache we come to. I just wanted to target here so at least we got to one. And uh, as we pulled up, there's a crevice on the side and I'm pretty sure it's right there. So we'll take a look because it looks a little suspicious. There is, um, somebody built a little Inukshuk down here, but that's not it. Okay, I'm thinking in this pile of rocks, bada bing, bada boom, there you go. And let's see what it says in here. Oh, there's even a pencil. The last log on this cache is from 2015. So this is a five year lonely cache, almost five years. It was September of 2015, the last time this cache was found. And uh, there's no names on it, so I'm gonna put me down with Mogul Paul. Got it. One down, a couple more to go. But first, a campfire and a sunset. Good morning. Today, we're gonna to go see if we can find a few caches, one of which has never been found and is at least five years lonely. Yep, it was placed in 2015 and has never been found. And that's only from here, 1.3 kilometers away, but we've gotta go down the lake a bit and then up a channel. So it should take us probably about an hour or a bit more. So we'll see if we can get that one found. And then we're gonna to head towards the coast of Lake Huron and see if we can get a few more caches and check out that area. Come along with us. have to be careful where you reach uh, and poke around because they, we do have rattlesnakes here. It's called Massasauga Rattler. So we just gotta be careful. 
Well, it's looking like it's not going to be found, at least by me and uh, Muggle Paul over there. Who, by the way, signed the last cache. We went back to it, he, and he signed his name up, Wolverine 31. And I've looked at all the rocks. There's no hint. Uh, it has not been found in five years. It was placed. I figured it would be the same as Turtle Rock, but unfortunately, I can't find it. <laughs> so, if you're looking for a first to find and a uh, lonely cache, it might still be here. I just can't see it. We can't do a throwdown, so we're just going to have to leave this one unfound. And it's not looking good for bent pine either. Um, this one uh, had a DNF uh, July 14th, uh, so last month, uh, about a month and a half ago. And then it hadn't been found since Indigo Dave found it in 2014. Um, so, doesn't look good. Uh, so there is another one just uh, on the other side of this channel we're going to check out. But first, I'm going to have lunch. So it's time to leave this island and we're going to go just across the channel about 180 meters to another cache. Hopefully we can find that one, otherwise this day is going to be a bust. This one's called the Bog and it's just across the channel from uh, Bent Pines and uh, hopefully we can find this one. It's a small, the others were micros, so maybe we can get this one. Closing in, I heard the GPS beep, so that's a good sign. Oh, I think we found it. I think we did. There we go. Oh, finally. <laughs> Woohoo! Finally, a find. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, then when this one was just found recently, so I had some pretty good hope of finding it. I mean, if I didn't. I have to turn in my geocaching card. Logs all signed up and we'll uh, put Paul's name in there too. So Cache Canada, half of us, right here near the edge of Georgian Bay, just out yonder. We got as close as we could, and you can see Paul, he's sitting over in the canoe reading his book, and I had to wait ashore, and when I got to ground zero, there was some rocks here, and they are pointing the direction to the cache. That way. <laughs> I hope. It's, it's uh, so many paces, it's in the description, so I just have to walk northeast and find the cache. I hope. 24 paces, and I see it already, so... Uh... This one's not going to be a DNF, thank you very, very much. And you can see it from a distance away. Hopefully it's okay, the lid is cracked, but it looks like it's all right. The lid is cracked, and uh, as long as the log is okay and it's there, we're good to go with another find. A multi seemed almost like a letterbox because the GPS brought you to a specific spot and then you had direction to go to find the cache. But hey, however you want to do a multi, I'll take it. Not unexpected, the log was wet. Uh, but I have a spare log with me in a plastic bag, so hopefully that'll keep that one dry. I put my name on both and we'll put her all away and get back in the canoe. See if we can get one more. But to, it's a bit rough because we're right at the opening of the channel uh, and Lake Huron is right here. There we go. The water levels out here are a lot higher and than they have been in years. So, so you should be able to paddle through some pretty protected areas with a lot of rock and islands. But right now it's pretty wide open. In order to get to the next cache we would have to cross out into open water. And uh, we're not that comfortable in a canoe to uh, make that distance. 
Uh, it's about 200 meters, 250 meters away. If we could just get around the point, we could come in through a uh, back channel for the island, but I'm just not, I'm not wanting to risk. It's not that important. So we're gonna head back to the uh, first to find opportunity and see if we can just give it one more go. It's not that far from our camp. And then uh, we'll just sit back and camp and have a nice relaxing afternoon. So let's go see if we can get that FDF. Holy doodle, <laughs> five years, unfound, an FTF. Persistence pays off. We came here, we searched all around. I even had my arm down this trunk, looking in here, but it was down here. And this is a partially dead tree, this part's dead. And uh, this was put into it. Uh, not a name on the log sheet, but ours, and my son Paul's Wolverine 31. Awesome. We were all the way out to the coast as you saw. We came back. I said, you know, we got time in the day. Let's come back, have another look. And we did it. Oh, I would hate to go. The trip was sweet, but it's sweeter with this first to find Lonely Cash, five years old. Five years unfound. Nice. Good luck to anybody that comes out to find this one. Uh, you need to go 15 kilometers unless you can convince the natives on the reservation to allow you to park there at 529. Otherwise, it's 15 kilometers down the uh, Nascoot River from Highway 69 or a 15 kilometer uh, skidoo ride down that river in the wintertime. And if you've got a power boat, you can come in here. And we were lucky because the water levels were really, really high stopped us from going out further out into the islands and we couldn't see what those used to look like but I'm gonna put a link up uh, right here there's a link to uh, what you can see if uh, the water levels were low there was a channel that I found where they were canoeing in the coastal islands uh, we didn't get to see that part of it just because the water is way too it looks like it's three to four feet higher so got the FTF we're going back we're gonna have a little snack and a drink and then we're gonna light up a fire and enjoy the evening. We hope you enjoyed coming with uh, my son and I on this adventure. And Lyric Class was gracious enough. She had to work and she understood the value of family. And you know, it doesn't take geocaching to get you out off the couch to go and explore, but geocaching makes it even more fun. And Paul really enjoyed coming out and finding the caches, and he took a strong part in finding that long lost, unfound cache, and was really amazed at how well it blended into this, to the surroundings. So we just wanna leave you as we go back on our 15 kilometer paddle upriver and I'll say what Lyric Last says, there's always more caches to be found. And where will geocaching take you? See you guys, Cache Canada. And I would be remiss if I didn't say thanks to Handy Farmer, the CEO for the caches right around here that we've been doing. It's been a whole lot of fun. I've, been, I've had my eye on this area for so long, and it's so nice to get out here, and it makes it even sweeter to get this FTF after five years unfound. And the other cache, which, I don't, you know what, I think I'm first to find on, because there was no name on that log, so I'm not sure about that one. But anyway, thanks to the CO and all the COs out there that put out hides. If it weren't for cache owners placing caches, we'd have nothing to find and no adventures to bring you.